Usually the TV or PC screen will suffice to watch our videos, but not today. This one merits a cinema screen. We're in Monte Carlo, the place everyone wants to live. Not me though, I want to live on a mega yacht and just tour the world. Welcome to Atlante, a 55 metre boat designed and built by the Italian boatyard CRN in Ancona. The exterior design is by Nuvolari and Leonard, the Italian design studio and interiors are by Giles and Boissier, who are a couple of French architects that have decked out some very wonderful residences across the world. So prepare yourselves for something quite extraordinary. When one thinks of a yacht, one thinks luxury. But here at the boat show, of course, we think sailing. So we really like the idea that it was a boatyard that produced merchant ships that built this. After all, it's substance that, no, by that I mean how solid the structure is, how powerful the boat is, how safe and calm you are while sailing. But as well as the naval engineering, we've got an awful lot more. Looking around, I can see all sorts of mega yachts that are all quite similar. CRN, though, in the past few years has produced some quite diverse models with various architects and designers. It's been to their advantage too, as it isn't a fleet they are offering, but the mega dream of the mega ship owner. possible to explain the creative journey from day one when you meet, when they want something quite different and you can visualize it quite well. For example, the first meeting when the owner says, I'm thinking Land Rover, and well, I was quite shocked actually, thinking a Land Rover on the water, and then with all the problems, the worries that come up during the building of a boat like this, when finally it launches and a few finishing touches, you realize that what you had planned from the start has come out quite differently. Look how this bridge at the bow is fantastic, really clean. There isn't even a bollard or anchor winch. So how does it moor up? Come and see. It's all underneath here. Usually this area on a mega yacht isn't used for guests, but here they've even put in a fold-away table, which varies the thickness because it fits into this recess of the bridge. Everything, every object on this boat is a design masterpiece. Look at this carbon pole that holds up the sunshade. It has a spotlight in it. Every captain wants to have a command post that is ultimate high-tech. It's all touch it, even the doors. This scale bar meter tells you the power input going into the machines. So much technology, but everything that happens always has to be recorded in the logbook too. In the machine room, there are three energy generators. Two are permanently working, and there's one reserve, so altogether they generate 436 kilowatts, the equivalent electricity needed to run 70 houses. What I like about this project is the idea that an entire bridge has been dedicated to the boat owner, who can decide whether they want to have it for themselves or share it with guests, welcoming them into this living room. This smaller entertaining area offers up various potential solutions for relaxing. Armchairs, angles and well-lit sofas. 
But if you were in a bay instead of moored up in a port like we are now, who knows if we'd be able to see out of these windows. You know how much marble they've used on this 55 meter yacht? 20 tons, which is the same weight as a 17 meter yacht. And this isn't just a main cabin, it's really an apartment. The luxury is highlighted with just how big it is. Have you seen the sofa? Well, yes, it's not just a sofa, it's a limousine. Here, anything is possible. If you want tea, it's here. The Atlante series is seriously impressive. It has a very strong personality that stands it apart and makes it easily recognisable. Do you know what it's made of? The hull is steel, so it's seriously strong. The superstructure is aluminium, so it's incredibly light. And if you put lots of weight down low and little above, you know you're getting the best stability. I really like it because its bigger parts, like the deck house, have the same geometrical design as the smaller ones. Now that's design. The handrails have a trapezoidal section, studded so they reflect the light, like the steel in the superstructure. Even the flagpole is a work of art. Should be on show at MoMA. I think that the Nuvolari and Leonard studio, especially Dan Leonard, has indulged us here. It's not just the first time I have said jokingly that his pencil appears to have run away with him. There's something in every corner of the boat, whether it's high-tech stuff or design. In terms of detail, it's difficult to find anything like this in a boat. Have you seen how big it is? It's 55 metres long and all morning going back and forwards. Well, that's a few kilometres. I need a coffee break. And when you add in all the engineering expertise and the Italian creativity, you come out with something wonderful that others can't even imagine. Like this majestic stern that gives you two ways onto the boat. One is a traditional ladder, the other crosses the beach club. It's a boat that has this double entrance that allows direct access from what we usually call the beach club. In reality, it's a foyer. An entrance in the boat's beach club means that you can go straight onto the upper deck, something quite normal on a boat of this size. Everything has been done for this boat. It's all customised, with a little thanks to the designer's creativity, the boatyard's admin, as well as the network of exceptional suppliers. Yes, the boatyard has definitely been the driving force between all these things, but there's also a series of companies linked to us that have really done an exceptional job, which we thank them all for. They are part of this boat too. The architects have designed the tall windows so they open up onto the sea, with the help of some low gunwales too. The furniture on this bridge can all be modified to how you want it. You can move the pieces, the tables, the sofas. Too much like hard work? No, cranes do it all. Here on the upper bridge, behind me, there's the swimming pool with glass walls and steel handrails. This is the sun deck. Bit of sun now, please. Thank you. On the lower deck, you'll find the guests' quarters. I do hope you will get to be one of them, as you will have 520 square metres at your disposal. Communal areas included, of course. 
You can tell it's a luxury mega yacht because there are fewer passengers than crew. 12 versus 14. Le cabine per gli ospiti sono quattro per una capacità massima di due. There are four cabins for guests which have a maximum capacity of 10 people and each is as big as the main cabin on a 20-foot yacht. Ogni elemento d'arredo è stato esposto. Every piece of furniture has been designed and made just for this yacht, even this sofa. Questo salotto si affaccia sul mare. This living area faces onto the sea, opening up onto these 10 meter long terraces. Truly gorgeous. Qui trovano posto anche due tender. There's space for two 9 meter tenders here that are moved by this crane. This hook alone costs 1,000 euros. La personalizzazione su questa nave è talmente estrema che si è arrivati a un punto dove il designer ha voluto disegnare anche i due tender. La personalizzazione su questa nave è così estrema che abbiamo arrivato a un punto che il designer ha anche voluto disegnare i due tender. Quindi, di nuovo, sono completamente atipici. In the sense that this is a large area that would normally be known as the main deck of the boat, and there are two tenders that are around nine and a half meters long, a mini tender and a more traditional one. There are these two side doors here on the main deck that, jokingly, I think they are like boat's ears. Nel momento in cui i tender escono, questa nave cambia completamente aspetto in quella zona. But as soon as the tenders exit, the boat takes on a whole new look and feel, as it's decked out to be a relax area, a disco or a cinema. It's the multifunctioning feature in this technically technical area that's meant for something completely different that makes this boat quite special. Come sulle barche a vela, as on other sailboats, this one has a hatch too. It's just not one that takes you below deck, but straight to the beach club, and it's huge. Se volete tenervi in forma, c'è anche If you want to keep in shape, there's a gym too. And if you're in harbour, open the big door and just watch the spectacle of the sea. We, though, want to check out the engines. Isn't that right? È il momento di dare i numeri. È lunga 5 Here are some figures. It's 55 meters minus 20 centimeters, actually. Width is 10 meters plus 20 centimeters. And two 1.63 Caterpillar engines drive it. Se dovessimo calcolare le prestazioni sulla base del rapporto peso-potenza, i risultati sarebbero sconfortanti. If you need to calculate performance on the weight-to-power ratio, the results would be a little disheartening, as we're talking 241 kilos per horsepower. But speed depends on other factors too, like the shape of the hull. Ecco perché l'Atlante raggiunge i 15 nodi. And this is why the Atlantic gets up to 15 and a half knots and can hold to a cruising speed of 14. L'andatura economica di crociera è di 12,5 nodi, con un consumo di circa 20... The most economical cruising speed is 12,5 knots, and with that it consumes 27 litres per mile. And as the tank holds 120,000 litres of petrol, you can go as far as 4,500 miles. Yes, that means you can cross oceans. If you wanted to go around the world, you'd need to fill up nine times. But if you fill it up over there, where it costs less, you'd only spend 250,000 euros. That's to cross the world on this mega yacht. Ah, sì. Oh, yes. Dalla regia mi ricordano un'altra importante fornitura, quella idrica. The director is reminding me of something else to tell you. Water. There are 30,000 litres on board, so if on average you use 30 litres per shower, you could have 1,000 showers, but there are only 26 people on board. There's also an 800 litre desalinator. Everyone can have 24 showers a day, no problem. I can't imagine there'd be a lack of champagne either. The beach club is called just that, on this mega yacht because it's an, an oasis of relaxation. There's a solarium, lounge area, bar, and inside a Turkish bath, gym, and massage room. 
fino al giorno in cui la nave ha toccato l'acqua è stato un percorso di grande From the day this boat hit the water, the boatyard has expanded a lot. We always thought that we'd gone way too far out on a limb, done something that wasn't actually possible or how we really wanted it. But I have to say, perhaps this one is of our happiest, most satisfied clients. E questo per noi è il più grande modo di comunicare il nostro, il nostro prodotto. Which is one of the best ways to promote our boats, with positive feedback from our clients about the boats. We aren't making hundreds of them a year, so having two, three, four clients that are happy every year makes us happy too.